In this video, I'm going to show you how to create simple motion graphics in DaVinci Resolve. This video has been inspired by somebody who's already done this type of animation in After Effects. I'm just going to show you how to do that in DaVinci. Now, before you get started, you can go over to the link in the description and download the assets for free. With that being said, let's get started. Here we are in DaVinci Resolve and before we get started, you can go ahead and download these assets from the link in the description. So once you've done that, you can create a new timeline and unselect the project settings, go over to format and click on use vertical resolution. And then for the frame rate, let's go ahead and change this to 30 and hit create. All right, now go over to the effects and drag in this fusion composition. Now right click, open in fusion page. And from here, we're going to just drag in a background and connect this with the media out. So now let's go over to the type and then change this to gradient. And from here, we need to bring this to the center and also change the gradient type to radial. And from here, we can just go ahead and change the color to this color code. And then this one, the one at the end, you can change this to black. Now go back to this one and from here you can change the offset. So increase it so that the black is gone but you have this sort of a shade surrounding the whole scene. So this is what, we're, what we need. And now the next thing we're going to do is add in our image, connect this with the background. And right now you will notice that this, this has some white background. So in order to remove that, what you can do is go over to the merge and from here go ahead and change the apply mode to darken. So now you will notice that the background is gone and now the image matches with the background with the whole scene that we have. Now using the merge, you can just go ahead and position this, but I would recommend you to change the size of this first. So let's go ahead with two and then move this down right here. All right, and now let's go ahead and drag in the second image as well, the boxing glove image and connect this with the merge. And over here we have this merge two. So let's go ahead and move this up using the Y right here. So right where we have this hook, or you can say the tie, or, or you can say the knot, you can just position it right here where we have this screen ending. And now we can just use this to move around. So just go ahead and do it enough so that this is above the head. It's not over the head. Or of course you can keep it on the head, that's up to you. But the whole thing is that we're going to use this glove image as the mask for the text that we're going to have in the animation. So right now, if we change the angle, you will notice that this is not the kind of rotation or the kind of swing that we need for the glove. So you can just keep this at zero. So for this one, what you need to do is select your media in or your image and then go ahead and add in this transform node. Now with this transform node, you will notice that if we change the pivot in the Y, we have this X which is moving. So we need to move this up. We need to position this pivot right here where we have this knot. So let's go ahead, change this right here. And you will see, now if we change the angle from here, you will notice that we, had, we are getting that swing that we need. All right, so once we have this done, and actually we can go ahead and change some settings for the glove as well. You can go ahead and add in this color corrector. And from here, let's go ahead with some orange color, something like this. And of course, you can change the gain, increase it, decrease it, that's up to you. So the reason I'm doing it so that this thread is also visible because the background is white, the thread is white. So it would be good for that thread to be visible as well. Now you can do it either way. Either you can use this glove itself to do the masking or you can use this line or the thread that we have right here to do, to do the masking. But what we're going to do is we're just going to use this glove for now, the gloves for now for the masking. But of course, feel free to do that later on if you want to. All right, so once you have this set up, the next thing is the text itself. So for the text, what we need to do is, let's just move this right here. And by the way, we're going to do the text separately. So we are, we're not going to add the text right here in this node. But for now, we need to do that so that we can know where the position of the text is according to the scene that we have. So right now, what all you need to do is just simply add in the text. And then later on, we will remove it. So right now, add in the text, connect this with the merge. And from here, we can just go ahead, type in our text. And the font that I'm using is going to be Inter. And this will be set at black. 
and for now i'm just going to hide this glove image and i'm going to use this text node to move this up so right here and you can use this dropper to go ahead and use the same color from the image that we have right here and by the way one more thing i would like to do here is go over to the merge of this image and from here we can just change the blend as well so i would like to go with some somewhere around 0 0.7 and then select the dropper and then select this color so this is now matching with the overall theme of the video all right so now let's go ahead and add in the second text and i'm just going to paste the text that i need for this one the same font that we used before the enter and this time this will be at regular so let's connect this right here move this up and of course we're going to change the color to the same color code that we did before and now what we can do is just simply reduce the size and position this right here now once we have this done what we can do is just copy the text settings from here we don't need these merge nodes because we haven't done okay so one thing you need to make sure is that you don't make sure not to use this center from the merge to position this text because we're, we're going to be using this text itself we're going to be moving it into a different fusion composition so make sure you don't do that from here only do it from the text itself so go over to the layout make sure you change the positions from the text from the center in the layout of the text node all right so once we have this done let's unselect these for now so what we can do is just copy them Control c and then Control v make sure nothing else is selected and let me just move this to the side for now and actually one more thing we need to do is add in the background and let's change the color to yellow this will just act as the highlight and also add in this rectangle connect this with the background and background with the merge and of course let's connect our text as well and this time i'm just going to change the text to debut let's say and now i'm going to position this rectangle mask according to the size of this debut text that, that we have and also one thing we can do is we can increase the size of this so let's do that let's increase the size to let's say 1.7 somewhere around there and let's go over to the rectangle once again increase the width and the height don't worry about the text below because we're going to just move it right here and for this one i'm going to select this text I'm just going to copy paste it so here we go we have the second text done as well and now we're going to also unselect these so the way that i'm unselecting it from the merge node is by just selecting them all the nodes that you want to unselect and press shift on the keyboard and just move this up using the mouse that's it so now we have these two texts done let's just move them to the side actually let's control x to cut it or you can say copy it you can copy it or cut it however you want this to be then go back to the timeline and from here let's drag in another fusion composition right click open in fusion page and simply just paste them and now with the text one selected click on this merge one two times and then select this text connect this with the merge two and the merge two with the media out one so here we have our text done now what we need to do is go back to the timeline and right click and by the way let me just go over to the media pool so you know what's going to happen right click and then click on new compound clip so let me just call this text one and now you will see we have this text one right here so now we can delete this and let's go back to our fusion composition below and then select the text in the background the second text in the background that we had and then Control c or Control x to cut then go back to the timeline do the same thing add in a fusion composition right click open in fusion page and then paste them all right so you you just need to make sure that you have these connected with the merge so for example right here we have this merge and then this text let's connect this with the merge one text two let's connect this with the merge two and then the merge with the media out and here you go we have the text that we created now let's go back to the timeline and right click once again create click on new compound clip and this time let's call this text underscore two all right so now we have these two text one text two we can just delete the text two from here and now go back to the fusion composition open in fusion page and now we can just add in this text one connect this with the merge five let's say and then the text two let's connect this with this merge node 
Actually, let's remove the merge five. Let's just use these ones. All right, so here you can see we have the both the text added. So the way the reason why we are doing it this way is because we have multiple text and it would be easier for us to mask it, it this way. Otherwise, you can just keep it at default. You can just you could have just kept it separate and then done the masking for each of them, but that would take more time. So in order to save time, what we did was we created these com compound clips and then added them right there in the composition that we originally had. And then what we're going to do is add in this mask and then connect this with the merge three and then do the same thing for this one as well. But right now, let's unselect this one. Let's unselect this one so it's not visible. And now let's go over to this boxing glove and then enable it so that we can see this now. And now we will be using this. First of all, let's animate this and then use this as a reference where we can add our mask. So right now what you need to do is let's go over to the transform right here and let's go ahead change the angle to minus 40. So this is where the glove will swing in and we can go over to zero and create a keyframe at this angle. And then let's go over to 30 frames and let's go ahead and change the angle to 50. And this is where it will rotate to. So this is how it will work. And then let's go back to 60. And we can just go back at minus 40. Do the same thing at 90. So just by leaving 30 frames, we can just go ahead and do the same thing. At 50 right here. And then at 120. And right here at 120, let's go back to minus 40. And then finally, all the way to the end, let's also change this to 50. All right, so if you play this right now, this is how it will look. Now it's not a very smooth animation, so for that you can go over to the spline and click on this angle and just select these keyframes and hit S on the keyboard to ease them in. And now this animation looks more nicer. All right, so once we have done that, now we need to do the masking. First of all, let's start with this rectangle mask. And from here, let's just see where this is. Let's go ahead and decrease the width and the height and move this up somewhere around here. And now let's go over at zero, create a keyframe at center for this mask, rectangle mask, and then we will start the animation. So right here, we have this moving out. So let's go over at 15 and go ahead and change the X position. And let's go over at 20, move this out, and then at 25, let's do it again. So if you play this, all right, so one more thing you will notice that this is not looking very good right here. So what we can do is, let's go over at 5, and let's go ahead and reduce this, or move this to the left side. And now this will work fine. So you just need to manually do this. This is a manual masking process. And now let's go over to the rectangle again. And then right here, where we have this coming in. So let's say around 40, let's create a keyframe. So first we're going to just do it for this text. And then we will do it for the second text. So right here at 40, we have this keyframe. And then at, let's say 45, let's move this in. Then at 50, let's move this in. Then at 55, let's do it again. All right, so let's see this. All right, looks good. And again, we're just going to repeat the process again. So let's go over at 70, create a keyframe. Then at 75, let's move this out. 80, let's move this out. And at 85, again. All right, and let's go over at 100. Create a keyframe and at 110, let's move this in. Nothing, that's it.
you just need to make sure that this is moving in smoothly and of course it will be a manual process so final one right here at 30 130 and then at 140 let's just pull this out so let's see how this looks now perfect and now we can do it for the second text as well so let's enable this now for this one the rectangle tool for the second text that we have right here let's go ahead and change these centers to move this out or make this mask this out and then let's go ahead create a keyframe at center and then let's go over at 15 let's move this in 20 let's move this in 25 let's move this in all right and then at 40 let's create another keyframe and then at 50 we can just move this out like this and then at 55 again this is just a manual process as you can see but let me just show you how this looks at the moment all right so right here you will notice it doesn't look very good in the animation starts quickly we don't need that so what we can do is we can go ahead and go over to five and let's just move this out let's keep this out and now it will work fine so there you go and now let's keep doing this of course now i'm going to just do it quickly but again just to show you how we're going to just move this back in so right here you will notice this is going back in naturally i think at 50 we should just move this let me just unselect the keyframe from 55 and then add 50. Let me just move this out altogether. So this will work more better now. All right. So now I'm just quickly going to do this. So you can just go ahead and do it yourself as well. All right. So here I have completed the animation as well. Let's go back to the main timeline and see how this looks. all right perfect and now we can add some sound effect to it as well so i have the sound effect for the movement of the glove so again you can position it according to how good it looks all right and one more thing you can do is just go over to the dynamic zoom you can enable this if you want to so this will also like add some more dynamic look to it you can go ahead and swap this as well You can also go ahead and change the linear from linear to ease in and ease out. So you can just do go ahead, try different things now with the zoom in, zoom out if you want to, but that's optional. The main thing is the the thing that I showed you, which was how to make this sort of a animation by using the mask and moving according to how this club is moving, revealing the text according to it.